I recently witnessed an argument and it was extremely uncomfortable and I want to get your thoughts below. But the, the conversation that we were talking about was in terms of, of wealthy people, uh, middle class people and people that are poor or people that are broke. And you had two, two people that were very passionate about their side. And I can see from both perspectives, but I really want to know what you think. So after I explain this, I want you to leave in the comments below, like, what do you think um, in terms of like wealthy people, middle class people, and rich people? So when it comes to uh, broke people, if you will, or, or poor people, if you will, one of the arguments was, you know, poor people, how they think about money is they think about as soon as I get money, I get to buy something so that I can look rich. So, so that, that was one train of thought. And, and somebody else had a totally different perspective. But again, I understood that perspective as well. However, when you just really think about, um, especially if you live in, in the United States, when you think about people that are poor, their money is typically spent before they even get it. Middle class people is that their mindset is the more money you get, the better you can get your credit. So they believe that you buy things you spend money and you really might not even need these things, but you buy them anyway so that you can pay them off so that you can actually build your credit. And once you get good credit, then you no longer have to keep buying things to help build your credit up and buying things, you know, and then paying it off. So middle class people, you know, from the most part, they think about money as a means to actually build their credit and get to that infamous coveted, you know, 850 credit score, if you will. Wealthy people, on the other hand, this was the conversation you know, that we kind of all agreed on. Everything around them, they wanted to be employed. They wanted to be working, whether it's a person, whether it's, a, whether it's money, you know, whether it's something else. But they wanted to be working. They wanted to be working in their favor. And so a lot of wealthy people think about it from the perspective that if, if I get this money, this money can actually make me more money. And typically poor people, they don't think that way. Poor people don't really think about how much something is going to really cost them. They just see the price. And the unfortunate thing is that whatever price you see, that's never the price. It's always what you can't see. You think about even when somebody buys a house, I don't know if that's a really big purchase, but somebody buys a house and let's say that house, you know, is, is $300,000. They see $300,000, but they don't really see that this house is going to cost them $670,000 once they're done paying for it. That's really the ultimate cost of that house at that current time. And so the, the conversation that we were having was poor people waste money. Poor people don't deserve to have money, <laughs> you know, and, and poor people are actually dangerous with money. So, so that, was, that was one of the, the, the perspectives that somebody had. And that really caused a lot of conflict. That caused a lot of the, the argument, if you will, that really made me uncomfortable because, again, after their explanation, I won't go into it, I understood both perspectives. However, the thing that I think about is the importance of, of mindset. And I, and I know, you know, we hear mindset all the time and mindset this and, you know, and it's not sexy. I get it. However, that is the determining factor because when you think about somebody who's rich, somebody who's, you know, middle class and somebody who's poor, a lot of the difference is really mindset. Now, again, some people are born into wealth, like they come into a whole lot of money or they were fortunate to be, you know, um, born in certain areas because the reality is this, depending on where you live, where you live makes making money a lot easier. So, so you think about it, if you live um, in India somewhere, you know, where they're just trying to get running water to survive, it's a lot difficult to make money there than if you live somewhere in the United States where things are flourishing, you know, businesses are popping up around you. Like this is totally different. And that doesn't even depend on like a person's skill set. Like they just have advantages just based on where they live. So as it relates to um, even making money, sometimes where you live, that's something else to, to also take into consideration. Because sometimes people live in places and they don't realize that everybody doesn't have the same advantages and opportunities that they have and so they have a hard time thinking like man why can't people just do what i'm doing like i went out here and got it for myself but they don't realize is that when they say i went out here and got it for myself what they went out to is not the same thing that somebody else goes out to so there's so many other factors that it, it you know is to be considered when you think about you know wealthy people middle class people and rich people however here's the one thing that i really think is extremely important i think is that it's very very important to look poor. Now, some people would totally disagree with me on that, and here's why I say it's important to look poor. Number one, you know, when you think about people that have a lot of money that you know of, because there's a lot of people that have a lot of money and you don't even know that they exist.
But when you think about a lot of people that have a lot of money and they show you how much money they have by all of the things that they buy, all of the cars and the houses and you know the watches and all of those kind of things, that's a performance. That is a performance. A lot of flashy rich people, if you will, because I won't even call them wealth and wealth and riches are two different things, but that's for another video. But a lot of rich people that are very, very flashy, that's equivalent to somebody who's a high schooler and they are the class clown. When you are the class clown, you don't get sick days, vacation days, personal time, sick time. You don't get any time off. When you are somebody who other people see as a class clown, that's your performance. That's your job. You have to come to work every single day and perform for everybody around you. And if you don't come and you don't perform, people are going to wonder, what's wrong with you? Like, is something wrong? Why are you not acting stupid? Same thing when it comes to wealthy people. You know, you get... Uh, a Bentley, you know, or, you know, the, the newest Rolls Royce or, or the newest, you know, Land Rover or whatever it, it is. And when you when you buy that, you have to get that year's model. And if you if you post a video or you, you, you flashing around and your model is three years older, it's like, oh, that's we seen it already. What, what else you got for us? So essentially, people don't realize that when you have money and you are very flashy, you're trying to prove to other people what you have and you don't realize that that is a job within itself. You have to constantly prove to them how valuable you are. And if you don't continue to update, and you don't continue to up level, and you don't continue to spend more money, they're not impressed with you. And here's what's so dangerous about that. The more you buy, the more it's going to cost you. And the more it's going to cost you, the, the more it's taking away from your wealth. Because every time you spend money on a liability, that is an opportunity for an asset to not make you more money. And when you think about all of the stuff that people typically buy that's flashy, it's not making them more money. So that within itself is a liability because a liability is simply something that takes money away and an asset is something that brings you money. And so when people try to impress other people, they're buying assets. I mean, they're buying liabilities, if you will. And it's like those liabilities is costing them a lot more in the future than what is costing them right now. And people just think about the, the right now. But here's something else that I think is even more important than that. When you think about wealthy people, if you will, compared to poor people, a lot of true wealthy people, you don't know who they are because they walk in silence. They don't, they don't let you know what they have because the thing that's more important to them than anything else is peace of mind. It's peace in their heart and peace of mind. And so they understand that the more that I perform, the more that I show you what I have, the more that I'm, I'm flashy and showing everybody, you know, my new car and my house and all of this kind of stuff, that is, that is stressful. Because the thing that, that they have to deal with is everybody's opinion who can't afford what they currently have. And so now you have poor people that are controlling rich people. And rich people that's being controlled by poor people is a never ending saga. And it's so stressful for those that participate in it. Because you, you have somebody who doesn't have any money. Like they don't have two nickels to rub together to put on what you are showing them, but they have an opinion about it. And guess what? You care about what they think. And if you didn't care what they, what they think, then you wouldn't be showing them what you have. And so when you have these people who are acting rich, they look like they're rich, but they're going broke trying to prove to you that they actually have money, they're miserable in the background because guess what? What they ultimately want, they ultimately want to please you. They ultimately want to satisfy you. But guess what? You're never going to be satisfied because that person who's flashy and they got the houses and the cars, all that kind of stuff, guess what? It's somebody else who has a little bit more money than they do, who's a little bit flashier. And that same audience that goes and look for the flash, they're looking anywhere that they can to find the flash. So flash is always around, it's always available, and it's always up leveling. So people that try to be flashy, they always get outshined by somebody else who has more flash. And they typically go broke before they ever get a sense of fulfillment, before they ever get your approval, before they ever get your validation. And when you're truly wealthy, you don't really care what people think about you. Like, like that's something that is, is really important. And that's one of the distinguishing factors between people that are rich and people that are wealthy because a lot of a lot of rich people they have a lot of money they have a lot of money but they care so much what people think about them 
and they're spending their way to poverty. It's only a matter of time before they spend their way to poverty. When people are wealthy, they have things in the background that is constantly generating money where it almost takes a genius to go broke because of how they set up their system. They have things in the background where money is working for them. And here's another reason why it is important to look poor, because people are desperate. Like one of the things that, you know, my family and I have been doing ever since I was, I was like a teenager is around the 1st of November, you know, we don't wear any jewelry, you know, we're, we're not flashy, um, and we, we're very conscious and aware of our surroundings. Why? Because you have the holidays coming up and people are very desperate. They don't have money. Some people don't have jobs. And so they're willing to rob other people, take advantage of other people, scam other people, hurt other people because they're trying to get money to look a certain way or they're trying to get money to get a certain validation. And so out of that desperation, they're willing to hurt you. And so when you look poor, they're thinking you don't have any more than I have or you don't have as much as this other person has. Truly wealthy people understand that the two most important things that all of us have in our lives is time and relationships. And when you think about like rich people and flashy people, how much time they spend trying to show other people what they have and, and, and how they have to position the right thing and get the right shot and make sure it's the right time and they have to have this certain amount of money scratched around like that is so time consuming. And when you think about those same people and you think about, because all of us have, have probably lost somebody that's close to us. And you think about how valuable we, we, we actually consider time to be when somebody that we love has either transitioned already or they're about to transition. And like what we would do to spend five more minutes with them or 10 more minutes with them or, or even two more minutes with them just to say this one last thing. And, and when you think about things from that perspective and you think about how much time People waste trying to show other people how much money that they have. They're actually spending their life away. When you really think about it from that perspective, they're spending their life away. So they're using time they can never get back. Versus when somebody is truly wealthy, they don't care what people think. The only thing that matters to them is maximizing their time. So they're maximizing their time by not trying to prove everybody else what they have because that actually takes time. When you have to prove something to somebody else, when you have to set the camera up this way and get the right angle of your car and you the, the right shot of your house and how they have all the room, like that takes a lot of time. And it's like, what, what do they really get at the end of the day? They, they get a comment, they get a like, they get to spend a whole lot more of their money that they can never get back because they're, they're buying assets instead of liabilities versus when somebody is truly wealthy, they understand the importance of relationships because there are certain things that money can't buy. There are certain things that credit can't buy. There are only things that can be purchased or there are only things that can be obtained through relationships. And when people focus more of their time building relationships, and maximizing their time, that's true wealth. Because wealthy people understand that what I want to do is I want to spend enough money to buy back my time. Because a lot of people think that there's only 24 hours in a day. And that's true to a certain extent, but it's not totally true. Because when you think about the output that somebody can do in a day, so if somebody works for somebody else, so let's say there's somebody like they have a business and they hire three people and three people do work for them for eight hours. That's 24 hours that, that these people spent in one day to work for somebody else. So the person that they're working for is actually getting an output of 24 hours of somebody else's time. That's not even taking into consider how much time that they actually have themselves. And so wealthy people think from a totally different place because the two things that are most important to them is time and relationships. And when you think about our culture, our country, the world that we live in, man, people are starving for authenticity because they don't really have any real and true and meaningful relationships. And it's like the, the people online who, you know, they like, like their mansion and like their Rolls Royce and like their Lamborghini. That's so empty at the end of the day because you have to keep doing it. Like, like people, people that are rich and, and, and flashy and things like that, whatever happened last week, all of the likes that they got last week, all of the, the, the great boys and not boys and all, of, like all of the accolades that they got last week, it's irrelevant this week. 
it doesn't make them feel good this week. It doesn't make them feel good today, so they have to keep doing it. And so that's something that they have to continuously chase over and over and over again because they're not really focused on wealth. They're not really focused on maximizing time, leveraging time, and maximizing relationships. And then, you know, when you think about poor people, poor, poor people, on the other hand, they don't even really value time. They don't even value money. And a lot of them don't even value life. And, you, and it's not really visible. And I say that they don't really value time because of all of what they do to stay stuck where they are. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people that are in certain situations where it's not their fault whatsoever. They didn't choose to be there. Some circumstances happened that were beyond their control. However, it is their responsibility to get out. They don't have to stay there. And that's the difference between people that are, that are wealthy and they don't have money and people that are poor and don't have money. People that are poor and don't have money, they just look for more ways to blame their circumstances, stay stuck, and use excuses to not move forward. But people that are wealthy, even though they don't have money, they're constantly looking for ways to up-level to get out of this situation because one person is very comfortable being poor and being stuck and being broke and being dependent. But another person, even though they're in the same place, this person is extremely uncomfortable. And the thing is this, none of us are going to stay where we're extremely comfortable for too long. And whenever somebody stays somewhere for too long, that means they're comfortable even if they complain about it. Because if there are some people, they really don't want their problem solved. Because when you solve their problem, you take away their ability to complain. And for some people, unfortunately, the only way for them to connect or have a conversation or even get their need of significance met is by complaining about what's wrong. And when people complain about what's wrong, then they can't find ways to make money about what's right. And I'll say this, when it comes to that middle class, that middle class is, is very dangerous because when you think about how credit focused a lot of people in the middle class are, they're wasting time because even though they're focusing on what appears to be a good thing by, by building up their credit, when you think about how long it's taking them to build up their credit and how much they're focusing on building up their credit, what is it that they really want to buy that needs that kind of credit score? And when you really think about it, whatever they need to have that credit score in order to buy, there's ways that they can get it a whole lot faster by not going down this traditional route of, of having excellent credit. And that's a whole nother video. But I really want to get your thoughts in terms of like, what do you think in terms of like, the difference between poor people, middle class people, and wealthy people, and even rich people to a certain extent. Because I know I made a, a certain you know, distinction, if you will. And I will say this. I'm not trying to speak from a place of, of like high and mighty and I'm looking down on people and I'm this like multimillionaire and, and I think of these peasants who don't have you know, $50,000 in the bank. Like I'm not coming from that perspective whatsoever because I have never had a poverty mindset from the perspective that just being broke and expect to stay there all my life. That, that's never been me. But there has been several times where I have been flat broke, didn't have any money whatsoever, but I am extremely optimistic about really going and getting to the highest level for myself. And I say for myself because there are some people who the highest level for them, it might be six figures. The highest level for some other people, it might be seven figures. The highest level for somebody else, it might be a billionaire. And the six figure earner, is just as good as the person that's making a billion dollars because they're maximizing their potential where they are. And I promise you this, there are some people that are making six figures that are way more happier, more fulfilled, making a greater impact than somebody who's making billions of dollars. Because the one thing that the six figure person has that the billionaire doesn't have is enough. Because there's a lot of people that no matter how much money they get, no matter how many cars, houses, everything, it's never enough. And that is draining, that is unfulfilling, and that is dangerous because at what point does it end versus people who they got enough and they're fulfilled. And it's like we live in this society where if you're not constantly looking for more and, and you don't satisfy what other people think you should aspire to at this next level, then you're somehow losing. And that's not true because sometimes money is not the best measure for success. But when you look at the fruit of that person's life, when you look at the happiness, when you look at the impact, that is the measurement. 
Because money is something that when you remove our opinion of its value, it has none. It actually has no value except the opinion of the value that we place on it. And once we remove that, there's no value. So that means it is not true value, if you will, if it can be removed in a matter of a second. And so I just want to encourage you to, to think about it from, you know, think about from a different perspective in terms of the importance of, of looking poor. Because when, when you look poor, sometimes looking poor produces the most fulfillment. It produces the most happiness. It produces the least amount of stress. Because even, even you hear about songs, more money, more problems, you know, and 99 problems, you know, but I ain't got one. Like all of these different songs that, that people talk about as it relates to money. And the, the, the honest truth is this. People that have more money and more problems are people that are flashy and they're trying to show other people what they have. And them showing other people what they have, that's where the problems come. But it's a lot of secret millionaires who are living phenomenal lives that you don't know about and they don't even care if you know or not. Because it's all about the two things, time and relationships. And they've mastered both. And it's like once you get to that point and once you get to that level and once you get to a place where you really don't care what people think, that's true wealth. That's true fulfillment. That is true freedom. Because when you think about all of these people that are like flashy and they're trying to show people what they have, it's like the only difference between rich people and poor people is that poor people, their money ran out already. Rich people, their money is on the way to running out. But both of them, they care extremely about what other people think about them. That's not freedom. That is bondage. Because when, when somebody has the ability to control you based on their opinion of you, you don't even know them. They've never been to your house. They really don't even know your, like anything about you, but you allow them to have that much control. That's bondage. That's not freedom whatsoever. And I think that for the most part, most of us, we want to be free and that's not freedom. So here's the thing that I want you to do. If, if, you've, you know, if you've enjoyed this video, um, if you disagree with what I'm saying, comment below and let me know your perspective. Let, let, I want to know your perspective in terms of what you think about rich people, middle class people, and poor people from, from different perspectives. That may be something that I did not consider, but I want, I want to hear about what you, what you think in the comment. And the other thing is this. If you are somebody who is a purpose-driven entrepreneur, like you really want to impact people's lives at a different level, I want to invite you to a five-day challenge called the Change Life Challenge that I'm putting on to truly help purpose-driven entrepreneurs systematically experience freedom, finances, and fulfillment at the highest level. And if that's you, I truly look forward to seeing you on the inside and spending five days with you to truly up-level and get to that place of freedom, finances, and fulfillment that you desire to be to, that you deserve to be to, and that gives you the ability to impact people's lives on a deeper level. Because let's face it, we see so many people on the internet that is impacting the lives of others. And we know, we know for a fact, we can do the same, but we're not doing it. And so in this Change Life Challenge, I want to help you get to that level where your mark is not just being viewed in the world, but your mark is actually being implemented into the world and that the people that you are destined, created, and assigned to help are actually getting the help from you that only you can provide. So I want to encourage you and I want to invite you to join the Change Life Challenge. So you can go to changedlifechallenge.com, sign up for the challenge, and I look forward to seeing you on the inside.